Hello, and welcome to another episode of Leader Generation, brought to you by Mata. I'm your host, Tessa Bird. Today, we have Monica Gaspari, and we're going to be exploring the never-ending topic of how to show the value of marketing in a sales-oriented environment. Uh, the real title is Bridging the Gap Between Sales and Marketing. Monica, thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to dive in. Thanks, Tessa, for having me. So excited to talk about this topic. So it's funny because I said it was never ending. It keeps coming up. We you know, have clients across many different industries, but especially in manufacturing where uh, you are the director of marketing and sales operations for Spartronics. Um, so tell us a little bit about Spartronics and your experience in manufacturing. Sure. So Spartronics is a contract manufacturer for electronics. Um, specifically in the vertical markets of aerospace and defense, medical device, life science, and instrumentation and control products. We have about nine global locations, um, seven of which are in the United States and also in Vietnam and in Mexico. And Spartrans is pretty new of an of a organization, about two years old. Um, we spun out from another organization that was in contract manufacturing, and we've been on a growth trajectory um, over the last two years. And so we have a lot of rebuilding, but a, a lot of exciting things happening um, in terms of marketing and sales. Um, but for my experience specifically in manufacturing, um, I've worked for numerous manufacturers from small family owned um, manufacturers to uh, most recently GE Current, um, who did commercial lighting systems. So you and I have spent our careers in marketing. So I've feel like it is surprising when you get to a company and there's this question of like, what is the role of marketing? How do we know you're really gonna deliver value? How have you started those conversations around the role marketing should be playing at a manufacturing company and beginning to show that value? Sure, so that's a great question. And I think it's always, you know, how do we go to the drawing board? What's been done um, previous? And, you know, stepping into a lot of these organizations that have not had marketing presence for some time or maybe had a team and, and, and didn't have direction or they were just following certain um, rules from leadership, you know. So I think the part that I love the most coming into a marketing role is establishing what that is first off the bat, having those conversations with leadership understanding what the organizational goals are, and then what the sales goals are, um, and that we all need to work together because marketing can just go do their thing and, hey, yeah, let's go to these trade shows and do this, but that's, that's not marketing as we know, right? So having a strong strategy and aligning that to the organizational goals, making sure that, you know, when I come into an organization, it's, you know, what are my top priorities and what are my quick wins? Um, that will A, identify kind of the next route, um, but also establish, you know, lead generation and demand generation. I think that's the most important piece because we can build things and create, um, you know, marketing tools or maybe sales tools, but they're not generating anything. So I think it's a really, you know, it's a fine line in the beginning because you need to really understand where are all the bits and pieces that we need to kind of build out so that it's a well-rounded marketing engine um, and that everyone's kind of aligned and everyone's getting what they need. Um, it's, you know, it's this tug of war sometimes, but I think that, you know, having that marketing strategy, aligning a content strategy to it, and then building around it is, is number one. So you hit on what I think is really the core of the issue, you know, where does this start, this lack of marketing in certain organizations, and you said, can come from one of two places, either they did have marketing and it just didn't work out, or they've never had it and they relied on other tools to grow the business. When it's the latter, like they've had other tools to grow the business, how do you begin to educate um, the senior leadership and the sales team of the role marketing can play in like scaling the business or, or what those tools are. Cause I imagine 
from my experience, sometimes it's like an engineer that could be the CEO or someone who's coming from a very technical mindset and they've had a lot of success. So I always feel like you're like running up against this wall, like, well, this was working. So why do we need to add on marketing? Yeah, no, it's a great question. And, you know, for me, always coming into an organization and having those conversations with leadership, um, right? Because at the end of the day, we, we need to make them happy. But as a marketer and our experiences, we know what works and what doesn't work and, and where we can kind of pivot if needed. And we're not always going to win in marketing, right? We'll try things, we'll fail, we'll pick back up and, and start new. But for me, it's, you know, really taking a look at um, what the MarTech stack looks like first. In so many cases, um, you know, you might not have a marketing leader that understands what all those technologies are and what they can do and how they can build processes in from your marketing automation software to your sales CRM to all the different sales enablement tools. I mean, we can look, there's millions of them out there. Um, but looking at that marketing tech stack and understanding, you know, what are the, the, the two, three things that we really need to get started? And let's build process around that. And how is that going to help me as a marketer and, you know, kind of help remove some of the manual intervention of, let's call it leads, um, versus, you know, all these things kind of make noise a lot of the time. And, and we're also paying and spending marketing budget for what? Um, just to have these things, right? If you don't use them, you lose them. So that's kind of how I look at it. So starting, you know, I love starting from scratch because you can look at what are those two, three pieces that we really need. And then let's, let's build on those. And then next year, let's bring in something else that can help identify um, another avenue for our marketing efforts or maybe a tool that could help sales. And that for me is the most important piece of it. Yeah. I love your approach that you start with the leadership team, priorities, objectives, and then you look at what do we have that's trying to support these priorities and objectives. And you, you're doing it in an iterative way. You're not saying we're going to fix everything or we're going to deliver the world. We're looking for these two to three things. Do you have any examples of what those quick wins look like and at a previous company or at Spartronics most recently? Yeah, so I would say most recently, you know, I kind of came in and, you know, we had a team, um, a marketing team previous to our, our new company, our new acquisition, um, and that kind of got dismantled. So I came in a few months after things just kind of sat stale. And so we had a MarTech stack, we had, you know, we were using um, HubSpot, we had a sales CRM. Um, I'm sure there were some other tools and it's just, they were sitting there, no one was using them. And, and so for me, you know, I think the quick wins were, Hey, let's look at, let's look at what we're paying for today, what we really need. Let's just get rid of some of those MarTech pieces that I know I'm not going to use. I know I need them maybe in eight months, nine months, but I'm not using them right now. Um, and then quick wins would be you know, just, I almost look at it as like a dirty closet and how do we clean that up quickly, right? Like let's pull some of the big pieces out and then let's start to organize. So, you know, for us in terms of being a new brand and a new presence, it was how do we get in front of our competitors? How do we get in front of our prospective customers and our customers in terms of customer retention? They need to know who we are as a, a brand and a name and what, what our values are. So our, my first quick win was social media. Like, how do we just grow our LinkedIn platform? We're, we're a B2B company. That is where our prospects and our customers spend a lot of their time. And so let's just start posting, right? I had some content. We had some old content. And, you know, it was quickly kind of leveraging that, refurbishing it, putting it into the new brand and, and positioning it out on LinkedIn. Um, and then it was creating relationships from all of our sites, right? So we had, you know, we had, when I started, we had seven sites, now we're at nine, but creating relationships within all of those sites with either our site leaders or maybe engineering, um, someone at that level that I could say, hey, what's going on there? What are you guys doing? Is there anything newsworthy? And, you know, we want to share that. We want to share our people. We want to share what you guys are doing. You know, are you out in the community doing something? There's just little wins. And, and to position that on social media, it starts to build the brand. And so we went from not posting anything 
to, we post every single day um, mm -hmm. and sometimes on the weekends, but every single day I'm posting something, even if it's just, again, we had um, an employee appreciation day last week in our Williamsport facility um, or, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago, we, we did a sales meeting um, at a different location. So it's, it's that mixed with content in our value proposition. And that has grown our brand tremendously. You know, we went from a couple hundred, 300 followers on LinkedIn to just over 3,000 in over the last about a year. It's been about a year. And we are seeing lead generation from it. We're seeing demand generation from it. We just heard from suppliers last week at QBRs that we're standing out and our competitors aren't doing nearly what we're doing. So those are little wins to me from a marketing standpoint, right? Like, I don't think it takes, you know, so much time and effort to post every day. Yes, it does to create a content marketing strategy and to get the good quality leads that we need. But if I can just position brand and our people and things that we're doing, it, it's, it's saying so much because we're growing tremendously in, in just that social media platform. That is fantastic. What was the reaction from the sales team as they began to see this traction? Yeah, so our sales team is so supportive. Um, they're sharing things. They absolutely love it. Um, you know, they're giving kudos and it's, you know, it's involving them too, right? So they're hearing it from prospective customers or like last week in front of some suppliers and that excites them because now our brand is, is in front of some tier one customers in terms of our marketing. And so now how do we continue to build that? So they're starting, you know, it, it took a while, but they're, they're seeing the value and they're seeing us grow as an organization, um, both from a manufacturing standpoint, but also from marketing. And that, those wheels spinning excites them because now they're getting leads. They're getting these in their in mailboxes and, and for sales, that's money, right? At the end of the day, it's money for the organization. It's money in their own personal pockets. And, and I love that because it's success. How, how do I get my salespeople good qualified leads? And that's exactly, and that was a small win. That was a really small win for us. I feel like you keep going a small win, but that is a really tough <laughs> nut to crack, like getting the salespeople excited and on board and participating um, I know you said it took time, but I almost want to say like, how did you do it? Like, so for example, we'll use like our company as, as the example, we do this podcast, try and create content, I share it out, I try and tell our salespeople and account people to share it out. And it's like mixed results. So I mean, I would say this is even something, you know, we're trying to do a better job of is listen to our clients, publish content that's helpful. But in order to grow the audience or in order to reach people with solutions, like we do, it's a team effort. So what were some of the ways that you got them to see this growth and, and to participate? And, and I'm hoping people, you know, at our organization hear this answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's what it is, right? How, you know, we have to work together no matter what, right? And I will say where I'm at today, we have some amazing personalities. Um, and if we talk about sales alignment, you know, it's, it's really one team. It's not marketing. It's not sales. Um, there's executive support, right? My, the executive team is willing and supportive in terms of marketing. If I have an idea, let's talk about it and let's see what we can do. And so, you know, how, how did I do it? It's creating those relationships internally. It's making sure that, you know, if it's, from sales or even, you know, down to an engineer that they understand what we're trying to do. And it's becoming a, you know, we want subject matter experts. We want, we want to position ourselves as thought leaders. We want to position our brand. And it is really hard in our world as a B2B manufacturer, um, especially as a contract manufacturer, because we don't have products we can talk about. I can't tell you about my customers. I can't tell you about my customer's product. So how do I, how, what do I talk about as marketer, right? So that's, that's like the interesting angle. And as I came into this role in talking to our leadership team and, and directors in different segments, it's our people. It's really the people and how they're working hard and they're 
they're helping our customers grow their business and it really helps us grow our business they're you know they're jumping in circles to get things done for them especially in the last you know the call it the COVID years right we know supply chain's a, a big issue and you know we're all feeling it and our customers are feeling it so what do we need to do to help them and so I think taking that story of our team everyone down from someone working the floor to you know our business, you know, our, our VP of business development, who's literally traveling Sunday through Sunday to get to see customers and have these conversations with their C-suite level members. That is what I needed to do. And it was, let's take, take that and start that as a conversation. And that's part of our brand. It's, we are going to be your partner and we're in, you know, I hear this all the time, but we have this customer intimacy model and that's what it is. We're going to help you grow and we're going to do whatever it takes to do that. So taking that story and putting it, you know, in front of all of our sites and, Hey guys, let's talk about that. How are we going to talk about those roles? How are we going to talk about who we are as an organization? And they get excited. And, you know, we, we started to do, you know, content, we started to do videos and the videos have been a great hit, right? We can't, again, we can't show certain things, but let's show our facilities. Let's show the capacity. Let's show the technology. And then let's show the people that are helping run the engineering team or running the quality team. And these guys are passionate about what they do, right? And they're, and they're, they're showing it on video. And that is better to have something like that than not have anything. And so taking that video, for example, and slicing it up and utilizing it, sharing it with sales to use it as a tool, um, especially early on when some people still didn't want to travel. So how do we put that in front of those prospective customers to show them who we are and what we do? Yeah. But I love what you did is, you know, earlier we were kind of walking through this framework that you use, which is get this executive buy-in, align it to the top objectives and priorities, and then identify the quick wins. But through that, what you've woven in is the values of the company and what you're doing as part of those priorities is always putting brand and values first. And yeah. that, that feels, um, it, it's like warm and, and very inviting. And so naturally now I understand why like people are more willing to participate because it's, it's them. You know, I work at a company that's directly related to something I value and I have shared values. And so if you're weaving that in throughout then I'm more likely to participate because it's, it's me. It's a part of me. It's a part of the company. It's a part of the value I bring to clients. All right. I love that, Monica. That's awesome. <laughs> but you know, it's true. I mean, and listen, at the end of the day, is everyone happy in their role in their career? You know, we, we all go through that in a, from a culture standpoint, but there are some amazing people that do have that passion and they do want to do a great job. And, and I have met, a lot of them. And, you know, it's, it's hard for me because I, you know, I work from home, I'm at a corporate level, but I try my best to get at those sites and to, to walk around and talk to those people and find what I call my people that I can reach out and, and send a team's message. And, Hey, can you help me with this? Or you know, there's younger engineers that want to write papers and that want content, but they don't know who to ask. So hmm. for me, that that's the win. It's, getting in front of those people and leveraging them and making sure that they understand that we are one, we're one Spartronic, we're not nine locations. And, you know, you have support at the top level. And if, if I can help you or you can help me, let's work together and figure what that piece looks like and how we can work together. Yeah, that is awesome. I feel like, you know, in our journey um, now underneath ModOp, it's really similar. I've just started meeting people from across the organization. And the one thing we all share is we are dorkily passionate about like our trade. Like there's yeah. so many different groups, but you know, the people who are in video production are like dorkily passionate about video production. And the people who are in design and creative, like they geek out on that. And it, it is, I love the idea of starting to bring that forward and weave more of the brand story into the content. And I, I even feel like how the podcast started was because one of our values is constant curiosity. You know, and so during the pandemic, it was like, let's start discovering things. And yeah. this is like the next evolution by weaving that brand into our curiosity um, to get more participation. 
So first, thanks for helping us out with how to get more sales buy-in into our marketing. Um, but tell me a little bit about, you know, what's next on the horizon for starting to continue to define roles, to continue to bridge this gap between sales and marketing. I think it's very interesting that you're on one team. Like that's not like that everywhere. Like who made that decision and how does that sort of help address these challenges of, of continuing to bridge the gap? Yeah, so maybe I misspoke. So we're not really on the same team, but I consider us on the same team. Like that's just how I feel, right? Like I'm marketing and we have uh, business development, um, but we work so close together that to me, it's one team. And I, you know, bridging that gap between sales and marketing, I think that's the mentality that you have to have as a marketer um, and from a sales perspective too, because we do offer each other so many different values that in many organizations, they don't see it, right? I've worked at organizations where sales and marketing butt heads, this person steals this lead, this person just goes off and does their own marketing and creates, you know, a sell sheet and everyone's freaking out. And, you know, we have to figure out how to work together. And that's the only way that it's going to bridge that gap. And so I do talk about us as one team, because that's truly what we are. And I'm, I'm on our, our weekly BD calls, you know, we have um, BD summits and I go out with the team and, and we talk about what they're doing and the prospects they're going after and, and projects they're working on. Um, but then we bring in kind of the marketing aspect and, and how can marketing enable sales and how can we help you? And, you know, most recently um, I took on the sales operations role. And so that's, what's changing right now. And so you know, I'm really excited about this because I've always kind of had this piece of sales in me. I, I'm passionate about marketing, but I love working with sales teams. So having the ability to m listen more, um, understand the voice of the customer, understand, you know, what those pain points are and how we can, you know, enable sales is so important to me. Um, trying to get it all done quickly is hard to do. Um, but, you know, it's one step at a time and it's understanding what those needs are and how we can, again, it's back to those quick wins. What are the quick wins? And then let's talk about the longer projects, the longer processes that we have to play in. Um, so, and it, again, it starts from the top down. It's support from management, from leadership and, and how do we get that done? That is awesome. So how, what type of metrics or charts or PowerPoints are you showing uh, the leadership team to, to say, hey, this is working in this mentality of sales and marketing as one is producing growth and results? Sure. So I would love to be, you know, two years from now because I'll have beautiful dashboards, um, but we are currently um, putting together a new Salesforce government cloud instance. Um, and this is a brand new project. Um, we're starting from scratch. We have not had that um, for some time um, pre, you know, previous to showing those metrics and those results. Um, it's been a lot of doing and it's been, hey, what does all the content look like? What, what are the results from social media? Pulling those dashboards in. Um, we've been running campaigns through HubSpot. That has been probably my number one go-to in terms of metrics and you know, data, data integrity was an issue um, early on. And so we're starting to clean that up. We've been cleaning it up with marketing programs, um, uh, with marketing programs, but also utilizing the data and looking to see, you know, just kind of weeding out the bad stuff. And so we've been doing that. We're starting to see increases. Um, you know, when we do campaigns, our, our, our open rates are amazing. Our click-through rates are, you know, they're over benchmark. Um, and again, it's, you know, I think that it's, it's the content, it's the way we're positioning it. We also are in so many verticals. So we're running different campaigns um, th throughout and to see who's, who's, who's clicking on what and what's working, what's not working, and then taking that in, and making updates to the next go round of campaigns. And so that's, I mean, from a metrics level, I'd love to have this beautiful dashboard, but I am kind of pulling it, segment, segmenting it from different areas, um, looking at our Google Analytics, of course, and, and we're seeing some great growth with just some minor changes on the website. So these, 
these are things that I do position um, in terms of reporting. I think the biggest thing is we're hearing it. We're, and that is going a long way with our internal team is we're hearing it from outsiders that there's, they're, they're seeing the growth, they're seeing the brand, and that has been a really positive influence. Yeah, I think that is a very important point because what I've experienced when I've been in the product side or the marketing side, in a sales oriented organization is no matter how many numbers you bring to them, if they're not hearing it and feeling it, it's like, they don't even believe the numbers. Sure. They're, they're like, uh, okay, great. Yeah. But I'm, I'm like literally not hearing any or seeing anything different. So that is so important that you, by building those relationships, you are putting yourself in the situation to get that softer feedback. That's so critical. Because there it like you can't track everything. Like a lot of people are like, oh, you can track every single thing. And but demand gen, it's challenging, especially in physical companies where physical relationships matter and salespeople are building, you know, human to human relationships that happen online, but largely offline. And if you are doing awesome things in demand gen online, they should be hearing and feeling it. So I think that's awesome that you're getting that soft feedback and you recognize the value of it because it's it is definitely more than numbers and I feel like a mistake I've made in the past is when I try and I'm very logic driven but pound on the numbers is almost like a deterrent like, all right yeah yeah no I get that I think too right as a marketer we want to have that reporting though too right I want to back up what I'm doing, what I'm spending, and show that true ROI. Um, so I do cringe some days because I don't have those dashboards yet. Um, but again, it's, it, you know, I've been here for a little over a year and it's, it's how do we start to build that? And now we have things moving and we have, you know, we're starting to see the demand and we're starting to see the good leads come through. So, okay, let's, let's start to kind of bucket those and we're building it. It just takes time. Mm -hmm. Would I have loved to build that day one when we came in? Yeah, but then we would have never had the brand presence or the demand gen that we have today. So it's almost like a give or take. You have to figure out or balance, you know, the best piece of what your marketing looks like um, and to make everyone happy. So not, now it's a priority. It's on my list. We're, we're working through it with Salesforce and we're going to have some amazing processes and we'll be able to spit out, you know, marketing pipelines versus sales pipelines. And what does that look like rather than what we do today? And some of it is, is manual in, you know, some spreadsheets and pulling them from different platforms. It's there. It's just going to be a lot more prettier. Come soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's, um, you're really good at prioritizing your time and aligning it to what matters most to the decision makers, you know? So yeah. That, that is a huge part of it. You can't go into each company or for us, go to every client and try to do the exact same thing, the exact same way, because everyone does respond to data, to feedback, to priorities very differently. And it's, you've found that kind of secret sauce for Spartronics and what works for them. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's, in any organization, that's all it is. It's listening. Like we just have to listen and, you know, I think I know the right way. And I think I know that we should do X, Y, and Z. Um, but how am I going to win over sales or win over leadership if I'm not listening? And, and that's just a big fail right off the bat. So I, I think just as a communicator, right, we have to open our ears and listen. And that's how we're going to be able to get to the next level. Yeah, that is awesome. Uh, so we're right at time. If people want to get a hold of you and ask questions, where can they find you? Sure. So um, I am on LinkedIn, Monica Gaspari, or you can send me an email at monica.gaspari, that's G A S B A R R E, at Spartronics, S P A R T R O N I C S dot com. Um, or fill out a form on our website because it comes directly to me. <laughs> Thank you so much. And if any listeners want to hear other leader generation episodes, you can visit tenlo.com and click on podcasts. 
Uh, soon we'll be moving over to Mara and that will be exciting, but you will be able to find leader generation in all the same places. So thank you, Monica, for joining us today. Bye, Monica, on LinkedIn or via email. Thanks, Tessa. I appreciate it. Awesome. We will talk to you again soon.